Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today on this very, very toasty day in Spain, I am going to do my hashtag make that look 2020 dress. So in the end, I did choose this dress, this Bondi dress, or this dress from Bondi, um, because I think the fabric I have is perfect and I think it will be nice and light for summer. And right now it is so hot, all I can think of is what is gonna be the coolest. So my kids are at camp, my husband is out playing paddle, which is like a, it's like a local racket sport, um, and I have the house to myself for a few hours. So we'll see how much I can get through today. So the first thing I did was I printed off the Berta style pattern from Berta Russia that I showed you guys the other day, and I'll show you a picture. Apparently I can't show you the line drawing or I'll maybe get in trouble with Berta. So, <laughs> so I'll show you the photograph, which I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to show you, um, that I think is the closest. And just so you know, I printed this off and some of you had questions about it being Russian. So you can see the, it's printed out in English and German and all of the letters and numbers, uh, well numbers wouldn't anyway, but the letters are all, um, you know, the characters that you would recognize. So you don't have to worry about reading Cyrillic. The instructions are in Russian, and I will show you later how I translate those for myself. It really isn't any big deal, and let's be honest, Berta instructions are, you know, uh, skeleton at best, so <laughs> I'm mostly just gonna be using my own common sense. So I'm gonna put this together, and uh, yeah, and then we'll see. got it all put together and like I said you'll see on here um, the numbers and also the writing on it on the pattern pieces are in English German and Russian so you know I can see where the fold is where the center back is that's all written in English so that's great um, I've looked at the size chart again because I haven't made Berta in a while and usually I make a 40 but to be totally honest they're often too big and looking at the size chart I seem to be a 38 or almost a 38. So I think I'm gonna stick with a 38 because with breast pockets, if it's too big, they kind of fall down at the sides and I don't, I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna cut a 38. Okay, so now that I have cut everything out, I have now printed out the instructions. Normally I would just leave it on my computer, but I wanna show you guys how I translate them. So this is all written in Russian. Um, I'm gonna show you how I translate it. Okay, so the first thing I do is I open Google Translate on my phone and I select from the, the language I wanna translate from, which is Russian to English and then I can direct the camera, I select the camera option as opposed to writing in text. I select camera, and then I point it at the instructions. Now, you can do an instant translate where you hold it over and it will instantly translate it. I don't find that very useful for instructions because there's too many words and it can't really process it. So instead, I select the scan option and I make sure that I have really zoomed in so that I am just focused on one chunk of text text at a time, that I'm not letting a, um, a word from a, from a column, the column next door get in there because that can mess things up. So I try and just like focus on that one. I click scan, then I click select select all because I want to translate all those words, not just one or two. And then uh, I can then pan down and see the full translation. One other thing I like to do is um, take a screenshot of that translation so that I have it for later and I can go through and then I'll have all the instructions in a row on my phone and I can just sweep through. Totally honest, I very rarely scan and translate the entire thing. For me, I have an idea of how this goes together. I'm mostly just looking for the basics. Um, I wanna know what I need to do for seam allowances, especially because this is Berta and I have a habit of forgetting to do seam allowances and then getting in trouble later. You know, I want to kind of give a quick overview. If I was using Berta Spain or uh, yeah, like Spanish Berta, I probably wouldn't even have to 
really even translate it. I would just pick a couple words that I need to translate. In this case, given that I don't read Russian pretty much at all, maybe three or four words, that's about it, I do need to translate it. So I'll probably go through and give this whole thing a translate, make some notes on this piece of paper of any ones that I, you know, a little asterisk if there's an instruction. I really wanna make sure that I, that I um, know what's going on. But in general, I would say that once I get a, a basic overview of how this is gonna come together, I'm just gonna trust my instincts. So now I have my fabric. Let me show you here. This is my fabric. This is from Meter Meter. It is a viscose linen blend. Um, this is probably, I'm guessing, a little bit lighter than what the original intention was, a little bit drapier. It's not gonna have quite the structure, but I do think it's gonna look really, really cute and be really, really soft and comfortable for summer. Hi guys, so it is Thursday and I just finished dropping my kids off at camp. Um, if you see this church right here, that's where I live. So it's about a half an hour walk away. And uh, so now I'm gonna walk back and get working on my hashtag make that look 2020. So let's see if I can, oh, it's bright. So uh, just to give you a quick little update, um, that pattern is not gonna fit on that fabric. I tried, I tried to use my magic, it just did not work. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to try and take the Cali shirt dress and use that as the base and then use the pockets, etc., from the, um, the Berta dress. So yeah, I'm gonna give that a try. So when I get home, I will show you that. Okay, so here it is. Here's the Cali laid out with the pockets from the other pattern at the top. I'm not quite convinced um, because I won't have enough for the belt, and I really like the belt. Yeah, so I mean, could I get it out of this? Yes, just barely. I could just barely get it out and I would have to like take off these sleeves and make it sleeveless. Um, yeah, I don't know you guys, I'm gonna think on it. I might even just start a brand new project. I'm not sure I'm gonna do yet. That's all part of the fun. All right, this is sewn in the real world, friends. And in the real world, sometimes you just kind of got to give up. So I am giving up for now on that uh, Bondi dress that I was going to do. It's just not quite right, and I don't want to. Um, I don't want to fake it. So I'm going to switch to what was your all second choice. Your all, hello grammar. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of RuPaul's Drag Race and things around it, and I have to say, as much as I love it, grammar is generally not the strong suit of drag queens, and so <laughs> sometimes, uh, anyway, that was a side note. I'm going to print off this pattern, and uh, I think I'm going to do it in gray, but I may get it out of this red viscose because I just think it looks so cool and drapey. It'll be a different look. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just talking. Okay, I'm going to print off that pattern. I'm going to put that together, and by hook or by crook, I will have a dress by the end of the day to show you. So I can't remember if I told you guys this or not, but I figured out my printing problem. I am currently printing at the correct size, and I did it by getting the app to go with my printer. And the best thing about it, not only can I finally print the right size, okay, that's the best part. But the second best part is I can print at draft quality, which means I, I use way less ink. And that is so great, because I hate using up ink. I hate buying new ink, it's all so expensive. So the other great thing, I think I showed you guys about these Berta patterns, um, when you print them, is they're not nested. So you can just cut them, which is so great. I think this time I'm going to try to add the seam allowance before I cut them, because I didn't do that with the other dress, and I think that will make a big difference. So I'm gonna remind me to do that. Will you remind me? Thank you, appreciate it. Okay, so I also wanted to give you a quick update while that's finishing printing. Also, the red and white balloons, it was Canada Day yesterday, and we had a very small Canada Day get-together for some of our Spanish friends to sort of share the holiday. So that's the reason for the red and white balloons. Um, so I was making 
two dresses for a friend of mine who was moving. So I've done a lot of sewing in the last uh, week to get those dresses done because I made, I copied the pattern, I made a muslin, I made two different versions. If I have any video, I'll put it. I can't remember, I can't remember how much I, I did. But I'll put in pictures of both of them. They both turned out great in terms of the fabric softening. So I went with the baking soda method, even though you guys were talking about the cola method, by the time everyone chimed in on that, I had already done it. And also I was not so sure about putting Coca-Cola in my landlord's machine, even though it's probably okay. I was a little bit iffy on that. Um, so I used baking soda. I had 400 grams of baking soda in probably about, I'm gonna guess like four liters of water, something like that, like half a bucket two thirds of a bucket of water and, um, and like two cups, little, little less than two cups of baking soda. So I left it in there for almost 24 hours and I took it out. It absolutely softened the fabric. It did not transform quilt and cotton into viscose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it still has the structure and whatever, but it's definitely more drapey and it is definitely softer. So if your goal is to just give it a little bit more drapiness and a little bit of like take off that kind of rough edge, that definitely worked and I would do it again. Um, so I did that for both of the, the meter meter cotton and also the Katya quilt and cotton. It made two very different dresses. Um, Actually, that's not true. They weren't very different, but it did have a little bit of a difference in terms of the drapiness. Um, the other thing I want to tell you is I added ties to the side because the original was a viscose and so it was very drapey. It, it already kind of conformed to the body a little more um, and this one didn't. And so I definitely wanted to add a little bit of waist shaping for her. And so I just did ties on either side and the ties allow her to now, you know, do what she wants with it. She really, really loved them. I gave her the muslin and the two final dresses. So I did three dresses <laughs> um, last week. So even though I haven't been showing you guys a ton, I have been sewing quite a bit. Um, I also did some stuff for Audrey and that kind of thing. So I'm a little bit tired. I think that's why um, I haven't got this up sooner because usually I try and get you guys two videos a week and I just haven't really been able to get something together. So I'm working on it now. I'm gonna get that other one done. Oh, someone also suggested cutting the dress on the bias, which was a great idea, except that I've never, I mean, other than like if there's a piece in something that has something cut on the bias, I've never cut a dress on the bias before, and I was just a little bit nervous to do so, and so I thought, you know what, let's not do that. Although I did cut the pockets on the, on the bluey, greeny dress, I did cut the pockets on the bias, to give a different pattern um, to the dress. And I think that worked out really well. So maybe at some point I'll have to do something on the bias just to play with that. But I thought for somebody else in fabric that they paid for, you know, and I can't get any more and she's moving in 48 hours, maybe not the best time to start trying to cut and sew something on the bias for the first time. Okay, so I am adding seam allowance. And I'm doing that just by using my clear quilting ruler. And I, I like a one centimeter, so I'm just putting it up against the one centimeter like this and then turning it. See, I can see this line here underneath. And I just turn the ruler all the way down so that it's matching this line. And then actually for the side of this, it's one centimeter between my size 38 and the 40 line. So I'm just using that line as is. Um, and they want you to do three centimeters for the hem. I'm only doing two because uh, that's all I feel like I need. Once I get this cut out, I will choose the fabric. Um, I'm still, yeah, I don't know. I think the gray hemp would be more similar to the original, but I think the drape would be really beautiful in this viscose. And since I'm gonna stick with the high-low hem that's in this pattern, that's you know not like the original, but I just think it'll be kind of pretty. Um, yeah, I think I might try and go with this paprika if I can get it out of the out of the fabric. We'll see. Good morning, everyone. It is Friday morning, and. Um, I should just never say that I'm gonna finish something on a day, because I swear, if I say I'm gonna finish it on a certain day, I never ever do, it's hilarious. Anywho, 
Um, I am here sitting outside. It is a cloudy overcast day, which is honestly welcome because it's been so hot here. Um, and I'm wearing my t-shirt that I made that I wore to sleep. Um, it's first thing, I have my coffee, I have no makeup. Please don't say I look tired. I know I look tired. <laughs> That's what happens when you're 46, period. Doesn't matter how much you sleep. After I saw you yesterday, I printed out the second pattern, the copy, you know, pattern similar to the Frankie dress in the green um, cotton poplin, the, the, the original. And now I'm still going back to that Bondi dress. Like I wanna make both of them. So I think that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make both. So I've been looking again closer at the details and I think I can actually change around that Bondi a little bit more to make it work. And as the immortal Tim Gunn says, make it work. So one thing I noticed is that the pockets, first of all, the pockets on that, on that pattern are enormous and they take up a ton of fabric, but I noticed that they're pleated and they're not pleated on the original. So I can take those pleats out and save fabric. Um, number two, the main, there was some self-facing. I can fold out the self-facing and just use bias binding. And then the skirt is the main problem, to be honest. And when I look at the skirt, in the line drawings and in the picture, um, it's it's different. And I think what I'm gonna try and do actually is use my Aran skirt. I'm gonna give that a try because the Cali didn't end up working out. Um, I'm gonna try and do the Aran skirt because that doesn't need very much fabric. And I feel like I might be able to graft those two patterns together. So, so yeah, I might end up just using, I might just end up using the pocket pieces from the Berta pattern. I don't know. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see. So I have to walk the kids to camp. It's their last day of sailing camp. And then I'll be back and I'll have the house to myself. And I'm going to pull out the Aran skirt and see, because I just, I still want to get that one done. We'll see. It's all a process. Okay, so I think I've done it. I think I've done it. And I even have enough at the bottom for a self belt. Okay, so what did I do? Well, I put on my thinking cap and I also looked at the original and then looked at the line drawing and realized a couple of things. So number one, there is a pleat in the back of this dress, top and bottom. I folded up the pleat, I don't need it. That's the pleat there, that's the pleat there. I realize this is a different shape, but I don't really want an A-line skirt anyway. And I put my Aran skirt on top of here and it's perfectly, so I think it's good. I don't even need to add um, seam allowance. This allowed me to then add, I had folded out this facing. I was now able to fold it back out again and keep it. These are the tops of the pockets. That's the other thing, the pockets. This is the, um, Front skirt, same thing. I've left in now the facing, which is gonna make my life a lot easier. And then these are the pockets. The pockets also had huge pleats in them. Like, look, look how huge. Look how much I folded out for that pleat. So now it's a lot smaller. So now I think I can get this dress out of this fabric. I did it, I got it. The only thing um, I'm gonna have to cut out of something else is the facing on one set of the pockets. Other than that, I got everything, including the self belt that I hope will be long enough <laughs> um, out of this fabric. So I'm really happy that I didn't give up on it. And then I took my time and really thought about what I could do to adjust to make this pattern fit. Um, it would have been really easy. And I, well, as you saw, I did give up on it. So. Um, yeah, so now of course, I mean, I haven't put it together yet. Who knows? I'm actually gonna run now to the Merceria with a scrap of my fabric and get the thread because I don't have any matching thread. I might also look for buttons while I'm there. Um, but yeah, so I'm really pleased. Yay, fingers crossed it works out.